In, in our earlier conversation, I mean, off camera, you, were, <laughs> you, you told me that you were working with the Dudarshan, with the media for some time. Um, and, and you studied mass communication. And um, I should not be the one doing this. You should be the one doing this, actually. Anyway. No, no. So what motivated you change your profession into taking care of children rather than engaging in the media and getting a job in the news agencies? Mm. How did you get yourself convinced that mm. your job belongs here? Hello everyone, today I'm with Aleno, she's the superintendent as well as the owner of an NGO or a children's home here in Kohima. So the name of the children's home is called Bright Morning Star, Bright Morning Star. Yeah, children's home and it is based in Kohima. In today's society, it's very rare to see young people taking care of children. So Aleno, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Okay. It's so nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Mm -hmm. So we have been trying to get in touch and finally it has happened. Um, I want to know a lot about your NGO, I mean uh, mostly the children, children home which is Bright Morning Star mm -hmm. Children Home mm -hmm. and it is under the NGO, mm -hmm. Ideal Chari Charitable Trust NGO. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your NGO, what, what does it work on and how did it start? Mm. So Bright Morning Star Children Home is under Ideal Charitable Society. Yeah. So. Bright Morning Star Children Home is a home for orphan, destitute yes. and abundant children. We give them uh, food, education and shelter. Okay. So under Ideal Charitable Society, we also have an uh, all-age care program. We have vocational trainings. We give a person to do the less privileged mm -hmm. uh, free trainings. And we also have this uh, BMS, which is the major work of Ideal Charitable Society. Okay, so BMS, Bright Morning Star. In short, okay. yes. <laughs> I, I just got to learn that now. Uh, so under Ideal Charitable Trust organization, you have like different you know, sets of people or sets of beneficiaries. And Bright Morning Star is one of it. Mm -hmm. One of them. Right, right. And it's for children. It's for children. And you are taking care of that? Yeah, so I'm looking after Bright Morning Star Children Home as the okay. superintendent. Mm -hmm. So yes. That's wonderful. So now that you have started and you're running an NGO and at least a charitable trust that really serves the people from the underprivileged. So how many children do you have here in the BMS, Bright Morning Star Children Home? We have um, 18 children. 18. Huh. Okay. Uh, five boys and mostly the rest are girls. girls. So they are go all going to school, uh, common school. Okay. We also have uh, seven children whom we are looking after their basic uh, food education. Okay. Shelter. Not shelter, the okay. seven of them, they don't live here. Oh, here okay, we okay, have okay. 18 children. 18, that includes food, shelter, ha -ha. And education. education. Uh, basically everything that a child deserves growing up. Yes. So uh, yeah, we, we give, we, they are like our own children under right. our care. Yeah. So, uh, so you're literally providing a children's home. Like, it's like a, just like home away from it's home. It's like a, uh, a yeah. proper home, I should okay. say. So. so they come and live like for permanent, uh, it's not permanent living, right? They just come and do their education. Uh, and after they pass, pass the exam, for example, they come and write metric exam. And after they pass up, mm -hmm. they go home. How, did, how does that work here? So, uh, under common, there are certain rules and regulation. Oh, yes. So, under CCI, a child is supposed to stay only for uh, from the age six years old to okay. eighteen years. Okay. From our vision and especially from our side, we don't have any obligation, no such oh, okay. specific okay. age. We would love to look after them and raise them until they become someone in life that's our uh, vision mm -hmm. but as if we are to follow your yeah, office procedure the yes. child is supposed to stay only up to 18 years 18 of years. age in a children home oh, interesting. Huh. Mm -hmm. as you have mentioned somehow about that your organization and children home works so it's very interesting to learn and i'm wondering about who is the person behind founding this organization mm -hmm. and the vision behind finding this organization mm -hmm. My sister, Abhi Angami, she is the founder of Ideal Charitable Society. So okay. under Ideal, this BMS comes. Mm -hmm. So we started in the year 2012. So okay. started uh, in a rented house. Mm -hmm. She is someone who has a big heart for destitute and needy children and uh, particularly orphans. Right. So she was working in Tamil Nadu for mm -hmm. many years and she has 
seen the people, the struggle yeah. of the people and she decided to come back. Why don't I go back and do something for my people? Because I'm sure there are a lot of needy children, even in and around Nagaland as well. Mm -hmm. So she came and yes, that's how it started with a lot of hard work, yes, tears yes. and sweat. Sure. Uh, she along with one warden whom she appointed and uh, we had to start with uh, making rotis and selling house to house, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no? So that's how it started in a wow. rented house yes, some, uh, in so. Paramedical mm -hmm. before we shifted to our own base okay, here. Okay. So she had really had a concrete vision and aim to really help children in the way she wants mm -hmm. them to get help. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like uh, which are the areas uh, these children come from normally? Mm -hmm. We have children from all different Naga tribes okay. and we are open to uh, any race, uh, religion or caste, it doesn't matter as long as they need care and protection, uh, protection, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Care as long as they need yeah, care and protection. And we made a mistake, right? it's 18 minus 5 is 13 actually, it's not 14. <laughs> oh, yes, okay, yes, so yes. anyway, we'll just carry on. Uh, care, mm. Children who need care and protection, mm -hmm. is it mostly from the Eastern districts? Um, most of them right now from the eastern, but we have uh, Angami, we have Lotha, and all different oh, tribes. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, we don't have any uh, we don't focus only on one particular tribe, mm -hmm. but any any children who needs care and protection, okay. like I said. Um, so in this beautiful building, right, even I think normal people in most Kohima areas, even people who earn average income can't afford a building like this for sure, because they don't get rent. Plus they will have to pay, they will have to pay for food, monthly expenses, they would not be able to afford a home like this, but you are providing for these children free of food, free of shelter, free of education. I mean, that's really interesting. So what, after they get education, what happened to them? Mm -hmm. Or how do, you, how do you normally manage that? Mm -hmm. Suppose some, so, yeah. Uh, the eldest child is now in class 12, okay. so he's waiting for his result. Mm -hmm. um, we would love to support him mm -hmm. as long as he needs our support wow. uh, we are focusing not just on academic education but mm -hmm. we also make sure that we focus on vocational trainings and their holistic development as well yeah. so he's also one who is very talented he loves uh, art and craft yeah. and painting so if he's interested he can go for trainings or mm -hmm. if he wants to go for further study okay. we our NGO is willing to support him further mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he will be the first child from a home to pass out 12. Mm -hmm. so Interesting. He's the first page. Okay, I'm really happy for the children because it's a very beautiful place, quiet place where they can really focus on their study also. Mm -hmm. And they have a beautiful library here, you know. Uh, actually, we are talking in the library. So it's very yeah, nice. Tiny, tiny library. Tiny library, <laughs> but it has some books, tables, chairs, everything that the children need. And the silence is so good. I mean, you can really concentrate. Um, so what do you think are the struggles in you know, running a home, children home like this? Uh, we definitely have a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, for children, they need a bigger space and playground, which we don't have right now. Sure. Uh, uh, we are just managing with the small building and the blot which belongs to my father. So mm -hmm. we had to construct this with so much of hard work. And yes, of course, they are very happy mm -hmm. and trying to give our best. Mm -hmm. But behind the scene, we have lots of uh, personal needs for the children as well. Okay. Uh, financial needs, okay. which will always be there as they grow older, as their education, as they you know, go higher in their yeah. education. Right. Uh, financial needs become more. Um, you have children, 18 children here, like most of them must be studying in the high school. Mm -hmm. And what age did, did, did they come here when they firstly arrived in this children's home? Mm. Most of them were in their class uh, 1 and 2. Oh. Some of them are from, uh, they came when they were in class A, B. Mm -hmm. uh, so our journey is such that we are more like a family yes. rather than a children's home. Mm -hmm. uh, so since all the children came when they were at their very young stage, yeah. we've yeah. been molding them and training them when they were in a uh, very uh, young stage. So, yeah, mostly at the age of uh, six, seven years. Wow. Huh. Okay, so they will come and stay here and after they, you know, graduated, let's say, met, passed their metric exam in 11, 12, 
they normally did was there any case of like children going back home again to their family mm. so far uh, uh, yes uh, a couple of children got reunited okay. with their families okay. uh. interesting so I in, in our earlier conversation I mean off camera you were <laughs> you, you told me that you were working with the Dudarshan with the media for some time um. and, and you studied mass communication and right. I should not be the one doing this. You should be the one doing this, actually. Anyway, no, no. so what motivated you change your profession into taking care of children rather than engaging in the media and getting a job in the news agencies? Mm. How did you get yourself convinced that mm. your job belongs here? So for me and for my family, we are a strong believer of God. Yeah. We really believe in his destination, uh, his will and his plan. So I never thought I will be working here as a superintendent full time, mm -hmm. looking after these children. Mm -hmm. uh, I went uh, for my further studies, mass communication in journalism in Pune. Mm -hmm. I plan to come back and work somewhere else in a media channel, mm -hmm. but I ended up working here as a full time. So it was, it happened, it happened really fast, and I. Uh, just God's plan, I should say. Mm -hmm. And are you enjoying working here? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I, growing up, I was a very shy kid. I was a very shy girl. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things I missed out. Uh, there are a lot of things I wanted to do, but I couldn't do. So mm -hmm. it's like I'm reliving my childhood here with mm -hmm. these children. We get to uh, enjoy the childhood together. Yeah, so that's yeah. one thing I really love about this profession. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. Mm. It's very inspiring, like I said before, like, you know, nowadays, every, most of our youngsters, of course, including me, we don't have the heart to take care of children. Like, let them, let them be their own. I have more stuff to do. I have more careers to pursue. I have more studies to pursue. But you coming back after, you know, two years study of master in commu mass communication, just working here is like quite a fascinating story. So do you look forward to continue working like this or what are you thinking? What do you think? Future plan? I don't have any plan for future now. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and meantime you are enjoying this. I am enjoying. Um, we are from a humble, a very simple family, mm -hmm. middle class family. So growing up, our parents have always taught us one thing like uh, we still practice that that is helping and keeping people in spite of not having much okay. so when uh, my time come to contribute uh, towards this ministry I was I was willing to take up the challenge even mm -hmm. though I know it's going to be hard it's not mm -hmm. easy sure. uh, challenges and behind the scene is not going sure. to be so um, clamorous sure. but yeah willingly I took up this challenge mm -hmm. and I am happy and enjoying so far Let's see what the future holds. Exactly, exactly. I think that's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, by doing this, you may not get popular, you may not get a lot of money, nothing, but in taking care of children, mm -hmm. where especially from underprivileged society, like, mm -hmm. and of course, I'm sure children come from those underprivileged privileged society in most cases, those children who are staying here, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure, you know, um, as a believer, I think God will really reward those people who really take care of people like that. Mm. And I'm sure you will pros prosper, not in the eyes of the world, but at least in the eyes of God, I believe mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely money, no, but when it comes to love and appreciation, I think we are getting more than we deserve mm. for the little contribution that we are giving. Mm -hmm. So it's never a waste doing something good, mm -hmm. never a waste helping people in need. Mm -hmm. um, the reward definitely is going to be big. Um, exactly. So exactly. we're just doing uh, what you can, what we can <laughs> in our little <laughs> capacity. Okay. Yeah. So uh, your sister founded this society and now I mean this NGO. For example, there are more children who would like to come and enroll. Mm -hmm. There are thousands and thousands of children who don't get the privilege to come and study in a city like Kohima, right? In mm -hmm. Nagaland. Mm -hmm. There will be thousands and hundreds of students or children from Eastern districts also. Mm -hmm. Not only Eastern, even in Kohima itself, you'll find a lot of people who don't get that privilege. Mm -hmm. So suppose someone wants to come and enroll mm -hmm. and be part of this. Is there any chance of, you know, welcoming more people or is it limited or do you look forward to expanding uh, more? 
We have a future plan that yeah. is to expand this children home because mm -hmm. right now, even if we want to uh, take more children, we are yes, not in a position. How we are yeah. not in position? Our capacity is for 25 children. Okay. And one thing we believe is in quality upbringing rather than the quantity, huh? rather than the quantity. Nice. Huh? Mm. So for now, we would love to keep it uh, minimal, mm. but try to give our best and make sure that they don't yeah. just go astray exactly. and they become someone and give back to the society. Exactly. So that's our heart's desire. In the future, definitely, if we have enough resources mm. and finance, support and definitely we would love to expand the children home and bring more children because uh, we see that there are a lot of needy children in mm. and around Nagaland itself mm. which um, mm, who doesn't get the, who doesn't you know, get the proper care place. and uh, education yeah. huh? I met some of your children here I mean they look so happy they they enjoy like stay they, they seem to really enjoy staying here and you were like just like friends to them so how strict are you as a caretaker or superintendent for the girls and small boys? Thing. Very, very strict. very strict. 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very strict, but um, we have this kind of relationship where they can anytime come to me and just play around. We will mm. just talk Be about friends. even my personal life, okay. about uh, you know my friends. So there are a lot of uh, things that we do together, mm -hmm. apart from me being strict. But when it comes to work and responsibilities, I make sure that uh, they respect the elders, they respect each other mm -hmm. and make sure that we are serious when it comes to our responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But we have this kind of relationship, like I said, I may be very strict to them and scold them left and right, but the minute uh, I, they walk out of the door, they'll be smiling and then they'll come mm -hmm. back to me as if nothing happened. Mm -hmm. So we have that kind of relationship. That's beautiful. I think mm -hmm. it, it, it resonates the name of your uh, home, children right. home called mm -hmm. Bright Morning Star, mm -hmm. you know? And calling, a, calling the children home a bright morning star and if children like look so unhappy, so dull and that I mean they would, they, they, children are really happy when you see them. You should see them singing. When they sing their mm -hmm. expression is so good. They, sure. they love singing. I'm sure. Uh -huh. And Nagas are fond of singing music. Uh -huh. So I'm sure they, and there will be a lot of talented children mm -hmm. doing that also. All not of as them as have like, different yeah. talents. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And it's what really caught my attention is like you have a limited number of children. Mm -hmm. You could have also, you could have also, wait a second, another five minutes. You could, you could have also just, you know, brought many more children just to create some reputation and you could have just stuffed them in a room. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you want to provide them a quality home. Mm -hmm. Because when we're stuffed in one room, like five, six people, we can enjoy that kind of lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. a quality home. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really that really caught my attention. That's mm -hmm. uh, I really appreciate that. We don't believe in doing something where uh, we're just doing for the people to see and where there is no quality upbringing. Yeah, exactly. So well, I'm not saying when they have more children, they are not taking care of them well. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. But mm -hmm. right now, for us. The, we don't have that capacity to mm -hmm. bring more children mm -hmm. otherwise we would love to mm -hmm. last year i got a lot of phone calls uh, especially after our performance in mm -hmm. twinsang uh, sure. there was uh, one of the biggest festival of Chang community mm -hmm. so we oh you went and participated uh -huh. okay. so okay. alongside one some big artist mm -hmm. so after that performance seeing the children perform uh, I got a lot of phone calls saying they want to keep their children, okay. uh, they want to bring them here and things like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, we go for a background check and make sure that the child who genuinely deserve mm -hmm. come and stay here mm -hmm. so that we will give them the quality mm -hmm. upbringing and education that he or she deserve. Mm -hmm. So for now, minimum, but quality. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And honestly, personally also, I feel the children like, one thing is they're happy and they seem to be really enjoying, you know, staying here. And I'm sure they will do the same in the, in the, in the coming years also. And uh, do you accept donation, you know, from community or how does that work? Uh, of course, of course. If people willingly offer to help, yeah. Mm, whether it is financial help or right. material, Could be uh, most welcome. Mm. But we don't really go and ask Bag. for donation. Yes, huh? yes, Our home has a very, um, I can proudly say that we have not 
gone uh, till, as far as I remember, till today, asking for a donation or asking for help. Mm. We have always tried to come up something on our own. We yes. sell our products uh, since the inception. Every year we used to open a uh, stall in Hornbill right. Festival, Night made, Bazaar. Made by products made by the children? How does that uh, Not just the children. Okay. The children, they're learning. We, okay. we are training the children as well, okay. but mostly the staff. Mm -hmm. And then the founder, my sister, mm -hmm. who is okay. very okay. talented. Okay. She make is. Uh, she makes a lot of products. Handicraft, so so handicraft mm -hmm. jewellery, crochet, mm -hmm. basket. And uh, during the pandemic, we started making moras, especially mm -hmm. the boys. Mm -hmm. So through that we could afford a laptop also for their studies mm -hmm. because we were short of phones and laptops mm -hmm. so we've always tried to educate each other to do something of our own rather yeah, than yeah. depending the government or depending exactly. someone to come Actually, and help us that's uh, the spirit that uh, should be the spirit like it, but in our society you know when somebody starts NGO or mm -hmm. children home like this the end goal is to get money mm -hmm. not to really help in many cases Mm -hmm. But like how you say is like you don't want to depend on government, you just want to earn your way out and just mm -hmm. you know financially self-support. I think this kind of model should be adopted by many NGOs so that the real work is done. Mm -hmm. But we have thousands of NGOs. True, true, true. So we really don't go and seek for donations or don't depend someone to come and do something for us. But uh, by God's grace, governments are on board. Mm -hmm. uh, 2018. We started getting support from the government. Mm -hmm. The office and the social welfare, yeah, social welfare. Uh, they contacted us and seeing our work and the children. The uh, we don't have any idea about mm -hmm. the scheme. We don't have any idea about the government funds. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, so uh, they contacted us and they told us that you deserve your home is doing well and you deserve to get mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. from the government. Mm -hmm. So that's how. They are on board, mm -hmm. and so that support uh, the staff, staff salaries mm -hmm. and also the children needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So, so Lino, thank you so much uh, for coming to my show and telling us your story, which is very inspiring. I'm sure our young generation, people from our, this generation, will also learn a lot about your mission and your motivation in this taking care of children. So I hope and look forward to talking to you again. And keep continue. I mean, keep doing the good work. Thank you so way. much. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Same here, and may the children also realize the dream through an organization like this. Mm. So all the best. Thank you. We'll meet again. Thank you. Sure. <laughs>